repent and believe in the gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is Wednesday, the 16th of March, 2022, second week of Lent. And uh, participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Prudence Haimbe from Lusaka, Zambia, takes for us the first reading. Doctors Belinda and George Assam from Douala, Cameroon, take for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Valerie Sindaigaya, a missionary of Africa working in Niger Republic, and he celebrates today his birthday. First reading. Come, let us strike him. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 18, 18 to 20. They said, Come, let us make plots against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us strike him with the tongue. Let us not heed any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and listen to my plea. Is evil a recompense for good? Yet they have dug a pit for my life. Remember how I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 31, verses 5 to 6, 14, 15 to 16, and the response is from Psalm 17b. Save me, O Lord, in your merciful love. Save me, O Lord. In your merciful love. Release me from the snare they have hidden, for you indeed are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your merciful love. I have heard the slander of the crowd, terror all around me, as they plot together against me, as they plan to take my life. Save me, O Lord, in your merciful love. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My lot is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. Save me, O Lord, in your merciful love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. At that time, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, And kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able? to drink the chalice that I am to drink? 
they said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my chalice, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at, at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's word focuses on the attitude we have towards those who suffer. The first reading of today tells us about prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah came from a small village of Anathoth, which was about three kilometers northeast of Jerusalem. It had only about 15 houses, and uh, it wasn't a big village, about 15 houses. Every village member knew who was who and what this or other person was putting on. And he was called from there to go to Jerusalem to preach. And when he started preaching, he challenged the status quo of many of those people, even the priests. He challenged the king of the time with the alliances that he was making. And at one point, they ganged against Jeremiah, wanting to destroy him. In fact, he was beaten and he was even put in prison. Jeremiah reached a point of breaking down. But he always remembered what God had promised him at the time that he called him from his mother's womb, that he was going to make him a fortified city. He was going to strengthen him, that he was going to be with him. And that is what motivated him, and that is what kept on guiding him through. But those who were attacking him had no sympathy at all. They were not feeling for him in any way. Look at what they would say. Come, let us make plots against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us strike him with the tongue. Strike him with the tongue. A tongue is a very dangerous weapon when used wrongly. And we have people who don't feel for others, even when they are uttering words, they don't even care where those words are going to land. But you know what? Words are very destructive if they are meant to indeed put down others. And whatever you say will be remembered forever by the one who gets those words. Because words are arrows. They strike and leave wounds on those who receive them. And we have so many of insensitive people in our time. And I hope you are not one of them. And I hope you are not one of those just destroying others with your tongue. Let us strike him with a tongue. And Jeremiah had only this to say, Hear me, O Lord, and listen to the voice of my adversaries. Should good be repaired with evil? Yet they have dug a pit for my life. Remember how I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. How I tried to work for them, but they did not notice that all that I was doing was for their own good. They thought I was destroying them, but now they are destroying me. Careful, my sister, how you even mistreat those men and women of God by your tongue who have given their lives to work for God 
who have tried in their own way to do the will of God. Yes, they have their own imperfections. They have, they have their own failings, but they have done something that is very rare in our world for someone to do. They have given their lives to God. They may have their own selfishness, but they have given their lives to God. Honor that. Respect that. And be sympathetic because they are suffering in that state. They have given out a lot and they are receiving back very little. Be sympathetic. Jesus in the gospel passage of today experiences something similar to what Jeremiah was experiencing. He is talking about what is going to happen to him. He is on the way to Jerusalem and he takes the disciples aside to explain to them that there is impending trouble ahead of him. And I can imagine what Jesus was going through already. I can imagine the loneliness in his heart. I can imagine having understood the plan of God ahead of him, having gone through that transfiguration where he got clearly the message from his father as to what was going to happen to him. And now he starts telling his disciples what was lying ahead of him. See, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles and be mocked and flogged and crucified and he will be raised on the third day. But hold on. Instead of sympathizing with him, instead of feeling with him, ambitions take over. We are told, then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. This is the problem we have. We want to put our ambitions before anything else. And when we do that, when we put our selfish ambitions before anything else, we won't be sympathetic to the sufferings of others. Our own plans come before anything else. We hear somebody has been admitted to hospital and we go to see this person. Instead of praying and feeling with this person, we start saying, oh, by the way, um, I also wanted to find out if you can lend me some money. Excuse me, he's in hospital and you want him to lend you some money? Oh, by the way, you borrowed this amount of money. When are you returning to me? This is our concern. We are not concerned about what a person is going through. We must learn to be human and to be human demands that we learn to go into the shoes of other people, getting into their shoes, feeling with them and knowing what they are experiencing and saying we are going to journey together to make you come out of the pain you are having. Let our concerns not only be what can enrich ourselves, but what can enrich everyone else? That should be our concern. But that will only come when we learn to be selfless and learn to enter the shoes of others, feel with others in our lives. Lent is the period meant for that. We are supposed to enter the shoes of others. We are supposed to be of help to other people. We give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Wednesday to you. Thanks be to God. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Dream